Hey there, today I'm just showing you some do's versus don'ts no! in games hide and seek. This will range from simple creative tips all the way to surviving in hide and seek game modes. So without further ado, let's go to our first do versus don't. My life be like the first do versus don't is to use paint and pipes to your advantage when building. You can see here, this is an extremely boring creative build, and it just doesn't have much to it. It's pretty bland, and you can't even tell that it's supposed to look like a mini city. But over here, you see, I just utilized a few pipes and paint, and I made a way better looking city. And you may not believe me, but these are the exact same builds, and the only difference is that I added pipes to this one, and painted it. So next time you're building, try using paint and pipes. Next up is the extremely important one. Whenever you're trying to make a curve in a roof shape or anything else, you need to use the corner pieces. You can see right here that this just looks really bad, but over here, all you have to do is just add this simple corner piece and it brings it all together so if you're ever building a roof or anything like that try using the corner pieces because i 100 guarantee you it will improve it let's just pretend that you want to make a massive nuke that will throw players far away well then you do not want to use this type of bomb right here you see the thing about this bomb is that instead of just hitting you back it destroys everything around it this bomb right here only has knockback and you will just get flung away it won't destroy anything that also brings me to the fact that if you hit one of these it will destroy all of the bombs and that'd be super inconvenient because you have to remake the whole bomb if you hit one of these it will just knock you back and you can put it back so these are just the better type of bombs to aim for next up if you're trying to make an uphill slope zip line don't use this color you see here you have to push yourself up the zip line which is not very convenient at all but you see here if you use a powered zip line by painting it neon then you can grab on and it will push you uphill automatically this is very useful rather than having to climb up the zip line give it a try because i guarantee this will help out with all of your zip line builds a very important one is to make sure that you have the right ground with all of your scenery you see how weird this looks with a big white entrance and a snowman but the ground is grass that doesn't really make sense at all so make sure that if you're using the snowy scenery to add snow to the ground i don't really know how you'd make a mistake like that but in case you do now you know how to fix it but of course you can go the other way around if you have a gnome and snow that doesn't match so you could also flip flop it like that next up we have painting you need to paint the decorations see these are just the default colors and if you place a ton of these in your map then they're just going to all be the same and it's going to be extremely boring but if you see here you can just paint the decorations and it will make it look much more better especially if you have lots of these in your map it gives you a nice variety of color this looks bad don't do this but instead use the connecting pieces you can see here that it's just simply floating and not connecting at all but all you have to do is switch out that piece for the tea looking pipe and it will connect it. This isn't a very common mistake, but unless you're just trying to make a neutral face, you should definitely try switching to these pieces. Look at that. What does that look like to you? A bare and boring tree. What does this look like to you? Well, to most people, and me, this tree looks so much better. You see it has leaves, it has a way bigger variety of branches and little twigs on the sides. If you had to put one of these in your map, you'd probably choose this one. So unless you're trying to make like a winter map, don't use the boring default tree. Next up, it may look like there's actually nothing here, but you'd be wrong, because there's a big difference here. Let's pretend you're building something inside of a regular hide-and-seek world. Since there are a lot of griefers in this game, if you try to use this pillow, griefers can just come up and get a bat or a bomb and just destroy it. This block right here has to be manually picked up and stored. Yep, that's right, you cannot hit this with a bat or throw a bomb at it. This is basically indestructible unless you manually grab it and store it. If you're building a sky base or anything else inside of a hide-and-seek world, try using the reinforced blocks. Finally, we have boring terrain. Unless you're trying to build sets back here like I do, you should not use the boring flat terrain. Look at this. This is so much better. You can see that all I did was add some bigger grass blocks, a few flowers and mushrooms, and even a little gnome. This just adds so much more decoration to your map. You can even see that I've integrated it over here, and I've even added bushes. As well as over here, and I even added a zip line and a nice little arrow guiding you down a dirt path. Adding simple nature decorations makes your map look so much better. So if you ever find yourself building a natural map or anything along those lines, please try using the natural decorations. Just give it a go and see if it makes your map look better, because most of the time, it absolutely will. That's all I have to say for the do's versus don'ts in this video. If these tips helped you out a little bit, please like and subscribe, as it will help me out a lot. Your subscription means a whole lot to me. It actually pushes me to make more videos like this. So if you wouldn't mind, just click it, and it will help out a lot. But anyways, that's all, so thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.